All right, guys. Got a little different cam camera angle here. Hopefully, this one's going to stay still. All right. Uh, welcome back. Four wheeler doctor back again. Can't really talk when the camera's hanging from the ceiling. So um, this is a like a 2000, I believe 2010 Formula 500. Uh, I'll probably put some links on the um, on the video here of uh, some stuff we did to this one, pulling it off the bike and um, and taking it, tearing it down, and uh, it wound up having a noise coming from the transmission and missing a tooth here on the first gear. And from what I understand, this is somewhat of a common problem. Um, so we're going to replace it. The owner actually wanted to pretty much do this as cheap as he possibly could. So it's not really my style, but uh, we're not going to really do anything else to this bike but put it back together. So um, he's going to keep the, which it wasn't smoking or anything like that. So he's going to keep the same rings in it. Uh, I had to put a gasket in it, but we did change these gear, or I'm going to change these gears. So. That's what we're gonna do. So uh, I got the uh, the first gear gear set in the mail. Um, I don't know if you can read that part number there, but that's the part number. And it comes with it comes as a set. It comes with this um, little cogged piece as well as the gear. And there's actually some instructions that come with the gear. It's the first time I've ever had instructions come with something from Honda. But uh, it shows how the gear goes together. The um, the there's little dimples in the um, cogged piece and it meshes up with the inside of that gear so the dimples would face outward on here um, this one doesn't have dimples on it so I don't know how they figure out how the factory one goes on there but anyway this uh, which this is factory but still you can see the dimples in it and um, it should slide on there Like that, mesh right up. This thing did have a little bit of wear in it on those on that first gear, so um, it really is not going to hurt us to replace that. All right, and here's our new gear with all the teeth. It slides on there just like that, and then there's a washer, and that's pretty much it. So now we need to put it back together. Uh, that's the two pieces we're replacing. I'll hang on to those to show them to the owner and next thing we need to stick in will be our will be our shift shaft this here with the forks um, the just pay attention to the stance on it it's got a fr a c and a p o r uh, the p o r is the rear so shove it in there um, it goes on this shaft and the kind of the way all these things kind of go different but uh kind of the way i like to to think about it as getting these lined up is the shift drum will be on this in this hole here so you want to have all of these little pins that stick off the bottom of the um shift shafts to face that drum so uh you know it's not rocket science figuring out where which one goes where but um and I never, I don't really pay too close attention to it. I just kind of shove it in there about where I think it's going to go. And it, it normally goes in the right slot, just like that right there. That's the center one. And it's lined up. And then the uh, the front one, they call it, it'd be the next one. And it goes up here. The front and the center one both go on that same, this same shaft here. All right, so the next thing you need to do is stick your shift drum in. Shift drum goes in with this end first so slide it in there and then what you have to do is lift up on these um, shift forks until you get them into a groove uh, what I normally try to do is kind of spin the shift drum around a little bit until I get um, get that first one in a groove and then just work your way up so go to the second one and go to the third one just like that they're all in a groove they're all pretty close to being lined up most of the time you still have to tap this thing with a hammer a little bit just to get it to slide down completely all the way through so uh, you can kind of line them up with your fingers a little bit that bottom one's just a little bit off there you go and then uh, take the hammer tap it till it bottoms out 
there you go so you got your shift shaft in uh, on this 500 foreman you want to make sure you put this um, this is the rod for the actual shifter uh, you can tell where it ties to the emergency shifter down here and then this end goes to the electric shift stuff make sure you stick that in there it does have a washer on here it's supposed to go in there too so um, that's pretty much it the there are two dowels on this uh, cover here one here and one here make sure both of those are in uh, they can be in either cover the, the front or the or the rear there and uh, I'm going to take and clean this clean this uh, back case up just a little bit a little brake cleaner and um, smear a little layer of RTV on it and then we'll stick them back together I'll cut the camera back on in a sec alright guys got the uh, thin layer of RTV around there cleaned up everything with scotch bright so now we need to slide this thing back together one thing you got to make sure you put back in well for one is the um, the screen oil screen here as well as the little plate that goes below it that thing's tapered so it just slides in one way um, also this little bearing outer or inner bearing race I guess you'd call it it slides over the um, crankshaft actually goes in that crank bearing so uh, make sure you put that on because sometimes it'll fall out when you're cleaning stuff and all that so uh, make sure you get that on there and don't leave it out all right, the, the and that's everything. Got the dowels in there, so now uh, just sit this crankcase cover over top. Uh, first thing we need to line up is that shift shaft, and then uh, make sure our uh, cam chain follower there is lined up and not getting caught on the gears. And so that's pretty much it. Just kind of ease this thing down. It's almost down on there usually kind of just snaps together about like that that's all the way down so now you'll start putting the bolts in it uh, this front side here doesn't have very many bolts um, three as a matter of fact so uh, three 10 millimeters one there at the top one on the left side and one on the right side so t tighten those down And then flip this thing over and do the back side a lot more bolts on the back side so just get all those in and um, I will cut the camera back on once I um, get all those tightened up and uh, we may go ahead and start putting this stuff in this back cover here first so I'll cut the camera back on when I get started with that all right guys back on the foreman again um, I'm on Go ahead and start with this back end here. Uh, probably going to do this a little bit different than um, than I normally would because I'm missing a couple gaskets. I actually ordered the wrong one, so um, I'm going to put the back end together except for the stator on here because I don't have the stator gasket. Probably flip around and do the front end and um, uh, I don't know maybe the top end until the gaskets. They'll be here tomorrow. So uh, first thing to go on is this big thick washer goes on behind the flywheel. Uh, also install your um, this is a little jack shaft thing for your um, starter. Put that in there. Uh, this bearing cage goes on next. And then just line your um, slot and your flywheel up with the key on the crankshaft. You can get it kind of close and kind of wiggle the thing around until it seats down in there like that. Um, I like to go ahead and uh, hit put the um, pull start washer looking thing on there and hit the bolt one time with the impact just to tighten it up on there because I've had them before where you go to slide the stator on and it sucked that flywheel off and then sometimes it's tough to get back in the keyway and all that so I'll, uh, I'll grab that in a second after I get all this um, all this other stuff put together alright so next thing to go in I'm going to install this uh, this other gear here, I guess this is what they call the secondary transmission. It's a lot like the flywheel, has a real thick washer. Goes on first, then the gear slides on, got to line it up with line the splines up on it, like that. And then a real thin washer goes on the outside. And then the other gear is this big one. It actually is the same on both sides, and it has to slide on this shaft here. 
this shaft has an o-ring on the end I slid it back on there so slide that off or it'll mess your seal up when you push it in so uh, slide it through and really this is the only difference in a two-wheel drive and a four-wheel drive bike is this shaft here uh, the shaft is just shorter on the two-wheel drives and it doesn't stick all the way out the front of the motor motors are identical and then slide your gear over that and then next thing to put in will be your um, your reverse safety lever this is what actuates when you um, push the red button on the handlebars to put it in reverse I might try to do this by hand but I don't know just have to kind of slide it in here and uh, get it to go in the hole it helps if you um, if you twist it down some so that it um, will spring back up and then to make sure it's in reverse what I like to do is uh, stick a screwdriver in this this is the end of your shift shaft here rotate this the transmission around so see how far we go I don't know how far that is but then try to turn this lever down and turn it one more time so I don't I think we're in the wrong gear that's fifth gear so let's go the other direction which will be um, that'll be counterclockwise that might be as far as it goes and then turn this thing turn your little lever down and turn it one more time and that's actually reverse so that lets you show that shows you that um, if you kick this back one time until that little lever kicks out right there that's first I mean that's neutral I'm sorry that's neutral and that's where you want it to be so that your um, your shift sensor the little gear I mean the little uh, sensor that goes on here lines up and uh, don't tear that thing up when you go to put it in so all right now we're ready to put the uh, cover back on I've got the I got it pretty well cleaned up here um, I'm gonna put this gasket back on this thing dry and it's got two dials one dial here and one dial here make sure they're back in there and stick the cover on I'll do that while I keep the camera running hopefully I can get this done pretty quick all right so just slide your gasket on this is actually the one gasket I bought incorrectly it actually wasn't nothing wrong with the old one but uh since I got it we'll go ahead and replace it um, one other thing that I didn't mention that you do need to make sure you put back in here is this top hole up here has a um, has a dowel with an o-ring on it and that's a little oil passage so make sure you get that put back in there and don't leave it out because um, it does serve a purpose clean this uh, face of this thing up a little bit all right guys the uh, <coughs> camera battery went dead so I'm gonna kind of start over here all right so I got the gasket on got the dial pins in got it in reverse I mean in neutral I'm sorry so now I'm ready to put the uh, back cover on one thing you want to uh, make sure is this little uh, arm here this is on the uh, thing that tells what's the gear gear indicator uh, there's a little end stamped on it in the long side of that um, little rod that points to the end <clears throat> if you make sure you get that lined up then that'll um, for one keep you from tearing up your um, switch when you put it all back together and for two make sure your uh, gear selector actually shows on your dash when you um, when you do shift gears so just uh, get this thing gotta go get it over the output shaft here and the um, the reverse shaft down there just kind of tap it it'll uh, slide right on there it's almost all the way down let me tap it one time with a hammer all right so it's bottomed out uh, let me put all the bolts in there and I'll cut the camera back on uh, once I flip around to the other side I think uh, since I don't have this gasket we can't put the stator on like I said before so we'll, we'll flip around to the front side and start doing some of the clutches up there alright guys back over here on the front side uh, first thing we're going to do is get this cam put in um, 
got everything here in the bag the gear the actual cam we can go ahead and slide this cam in here uh, you can see it's got a little dimple little hole in the top of it right there that face is up so um, just slide that thing in there got a little bearing on the back side that it has to mesh up with and may have to tap it don't see the hammer so we're going to use this screwdriver real quick just like that all right so that's in there um next thing to stick in i may go ahead and just go and put this uh, plate that holds it down it slides in and goes over this little notch down here it really holds the bearing in on the cam um, these things normally have some loctite on them too and so i'll stick a little bit of loctite on there uh, actually it has a lot of bit of loctite so um tighten that down that's a 12 millimeter and grab a short extension I think I don't think this has a uh, has a torque spec on it. You just tighten it down till it's pretty tight. Definitely don't want this backing out. All right. Next thing to do is uh, that's good and tight. Is to um, make sure the things that. Uh, top dead center so uh, you'll want to look through your timing hole back here and let me see if I can get a flashlight back here on the back side since I got this back cover off this might be my perfect opportunity to show that timing mark that you most of the time can't see if I could just get this flashlight to shine in there something like that alright so now turn the crankshaft over and what you want to try to do is line up uh, the mark in there, there'll be a mark that has a, a F on it. And there it is. God, this is super small. Um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it even with it exposed. Back end exposed on it. Anyway, y'all going to have to just take my word for it. There's a mark in there that's got an F on it. And that's for when the uh, engine fires. All right. I don't know if you'll see, you can see it or not. Let's see if I could zoom in. All right. So there's the F mark. You can barely see it. Um, and then. The next mark you come to will be a T mark. I know you can't see that because the flashlight just fell. But it's uh, it's got a little dash below the letter T. And then a T stamped on it. My camera's not going to focus up on it. But anyway, you're just going to have to take my word for it. The um, So it's got a, the F is the uh, fire mark. The T is when it uh, is actually at top dead center. And you just want to line that up. There's actually a little notch on the back side here. You line that tick mark below the T up with a little notch on the back side of that hole. So uh, that's how you get it at top dead center. And uh, that's where you're going to need to get your cam set on the tick marks. So let me see here. Get my handy dandy camera stand lined up. All right. So you can go ahead and slide the chain over the um, over the crankshaft. There's two sets of uh, two sets of teeth on this thing. Uh, the rear one's the one you're going to be using. Actually, the front ones I don't even think they'll work. So um, the gear is right here, and what you want to line up. This thing's got HPO stamped in it, and then there's a little tick mark, and that tick mark needs to line up with this little. Um, little arrow looking piece right here is cast into the case so you line that that hole that tick mark where's the tick mark at right there and that line up all together all while it's at 
the T mark on the flywheel back there. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not that hard. Uh, you can go ahead and slide this chain over here, uh, slide it on the flywheel. I mean, I'm sorry, on the crankshaft. I, I like to try to get it kind of close with my, without it even touching the the, the um, cam. All right, and so check and make sure that you still at your T mark in the back, which we are, and then we're here, here, barely see the other tick mark, and then there. So everything's lined up. Um, so you can go ahead and put these bolts in. They also need some Loctite on them, and uh, I think they actually have a torque spec. Let me consult the manual here real quick just so I don't lead you in the wrong direction. I'm going to knock off every one of these tools I got hanging on this magnetic strip over here before I give you the information to. Yes, they are uh, 20 newton meters or 15 foot pounds are those bolts. They're 10 millimeter headed, but they got a real uh, big shank on them. So uh, shoot some Loctite on there and uh, 15 foot pounds should torque them down and then we'll install the tensioner. All right guys, got the uh, cam chain uh, gear torqued on there now. Next thing to put in is the tensioner. The way you work this tensioner is you push in on this little tab right here with your finger and push in on the plunger and it will relieve the pressure on it. And there's a little teeny hole right here in the uh, tensioner. Stick a piece of wire in there and that holds the uh, tensioner closed so that you can um, get it installed. So you got two 10 millimeter bolts to hold it in. Like that. And like that. Then pull your wire out and it shoots tension to it. <clears throat> Alright, next thing to stick in are these uh, cam followers. They just slide right in these holes in the top here. Alright, I'm also going to knock these uh, motor mounts in too. Just take the, you kind of push them in with your hand sometimes, or sometimes you have to tap them with a hammer, but push those in. We're going to need those eventually, and I just saw them laying in the box. All right, so we got that. Next. All right, guys. Um, next thing we're going to put on will be this gear. There's a washer that goes on the back side of it. Make sure you include that. It goes on the crankshaft here. Kind of rotate it as you push it on. All right, that goes on there. Then um, I believe this will go on next. Yes, the um, this little clutch guard. I'm really not sure what the purpose is in this thing, but uh, some some uh, some Hondas have these and some of them don't. So it's got a little short bolt goes in there, and then the longer bolt goes in here. That's actually the same bolt that um, uh, one of the third bolt on the uh, oil pump. All right, now we're gonna install the change clutches. Uh, I've got them all tied together here with the um, with the bolts and all. Uh, just slides back on the shaft. It's a, a bolt and a washer on the front side. It's also got this little sleeve thing in the back. Make sure that goes back in there. So slide that on like this. Gotta get it lined up with two different things. You gotta get it lined up the splines on the shaft as well as lined up with the um, teeth on this gear here so uh, I'm just gonna hand tighten this right now until I can hit it with the impact and uh, it needs to be staked on too so take a punch and hit it right on that flat spot to keep that thing from backing off and I might yeah I think it's probably gonna be easier if I go ahead and install this uh, gear chain stuff on here before I put this uh, before I put that change clutch on there. So let me get the, the gear gear chain stuff here installed. Um, first thing we're going to stick on will be this uh, star shaped piece and we had took the dowel out and uh, um, disassembled this thing. So find the dowel in your bag here. 
stick the dowel in the hole like that and then you can take a screwdriver and pry down on this arm a little bit here and it will let the the star shaped piece fit in there and then it kind of helps hold it all in there, in there together excuse me I got the Steve <coughs> all right hang on just a second let me move this camera around so I can get in here a little easier to this all right guys I got it set up a little better now um, next thing that needs to go on will be a washer I actually got two washers that were left with this thing. I believe it's going to be the one with the bigger hole in it. It slides all the way down on there, all the way against the case. All right, next thing to go in is this thing that looks like a golf divot tool. And it slides over this um, this shift shaft here and kind of locks on to the star looking piece. All right, and then after that is the big washer with the uh, 10 millimeter nut. A bolt, I'm sorry. Make sure you put some Loctite on this because um, I've actually had these things back off before and it makes them do all sorts of crazy stuff as far as shifting goes. So uh, make sure you you do Loctite that and um, I'm probably going to torque that down to our normal uh, 9 foot pounds just like all the other 10 millimeter bolts just to make sure all right got that in there I believe I got all these other ones torqued too all right so um, got that in all right the next item to go in there will be this other little funny arm here with the two springs on it it slides over that shift shaft again and it's got a little keyway that it kind of goes into and you got to make sure this thing seats all the way down it also needs to line up over that pin there um, so got to push on it a little bit to get all kind of stuff lined up there's a pin on this a slot on this divot looking tool that the um, that thing also has to go through there it goes so it all slides in like that and then you need to clip the uh, that spring onto this little hole on the I don't know what that thing's called but I call it a divot looking tool so on the thing that looks like a divot tool and what I'm checking is to make sure that, that thing has to seat down in there all the way I've had them before get kind of caught on those two little arms of the divot tool and um, it not not go back together quite right I'm gonna check and make sure that this is all the way down in there yeah see it's hitting hitting the little divot tool so I need to lift it up just a little bit and push down on this arm there it goes it, and it didn't move but like an eighth of an inch but it has to move that far you won't just won't go back in there together right all right so I got that in there um, everything else I'm probably gonna go ahead and put the uh, put the clutch back on there now because everything else is gonna be outside of the clutch now Let's see it went right on there the first time and that just goes to show I was lucky because it's not sliding right on right now so I got to get the splines lined up there it goes alright put the washer in the nut finger tighten that and we can go ahead and put the uh, the centrifugal clutch back on there there again washer in the nut There again, two sets of splines that you have to line up on it. And then the last few things, this arm here goes on to onto the shift shaft. In here slides in here where this between these two little springs. And it's got kind of a key way that it has to go into or a, a little notch in there. Let me see if I can keep this thing up. It ain't got the 
got to work much longer. And it's not going to work. Set it back up. Try to get it up here where you guys can see it. There it goes. Slid that on there. Make sure it goes all the way down between that um, little spring. And the last remaining items. I'm just going to show you how these go on there. I'm going to take these back off because it's going to be a minute before we uh, get this cover on. I'm going to have to get a uh, gasket like I said. So this washer and this little holder goes in the center of that change clutch. Just like that. And then this thing here goes in there next. This thing, this uh, nipple on the back side goes in the middle of that bearing. Like that. I don't have that one pushed all the way in there. And so that nipple goes on there like that. And then this thing with the balls on it, three balls and a little spring. The spring goes in toward the motor and it sits just like that. And that's everything. Um, so you're ready to put the front cover back on now after you tighten these two nuts up. And that's it. So I'm going to stick these back in the bag because like I said, it's going to be a minute before we, uh, before we get to put this front cover on. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten these nuts up. And might try to do a little bit on the top end. All right, I'll cut the camera back on in a sec. All right, guys. Um, like I said before, this isn't really normally my style. I usually would replace all this stuff, but this owner is wanting to pretty much get this thing back together as cheap as he can. Um, so I'm going to reuse the rings that's in here and just put it back together like he wants. So um, clean the cylinder up a little bit and... What you do is just slide this thing back over. Get your get your line get your holes lined up. It does have two dowels here, so uh, get your piston kind of lined up in the center. And um, I like to take a small screwdriver like this here and push in on the rings. A lot of times this thing is is square as you try to push it down on there. It'll still get cocks on it kind of sideways and uh, it will make it to where they don't one side goes in before the other and that actually makes it a lot easier to put the rings in you can just push one side of the rings in and uh and the other ones will line or will already be compressed so about like that tap it a little bit with your hand to get it to go down. Clean up the base of that thing a little bit. All right, there you go, it slides right down on there. All the way down. All right, so uh, it's got two bolts that need to go in here, two 10 millimeter bolts that hold that cylinder down. Uh, we'll stick those in grab the head gasket and the head and uh, show you how to put those on sometimes these pistons can be tough cylinders I mean it can be tough to get to go down there this one here was pretty easy but just keep working with it you'll eventually get it to go down you just don't want to pinch those rings or get the ring cocked off to the side and wind up uh, bending the ring because that will make all kind of problems so. alright let me grab a head and the uh, head gasket. Alright guys, uh, put a little bit of copper seal to spray on the uh, head gasket just to try to help that thing seal up. Um, slide this thing over. I'm not sure if this is the right way. I think it might. there might be two different ways you can stick it on here. So Let me see. Yep, that's not the correct way. Uh, this one doesn't have an up or a down on it, so you really don't know, I guess. Just like that. There's two dowels, front and rear there, that you have to um, make sure that the gasket slides over. And then the head just slides right on top of all of that. Line your bolt holes up. 
I like to uh, put the dowels in the bottom portion and then lay the gasket over it because I have had them in the top before and that gasket get cocked off a little bit and it would end up uh, pinching, the, pinching your gasket and uh, that's not good. So tap that thing down on there. So it's seated down on there now and it's got um, washers as well as some nuts that need to go back on there. The <clears throat> it's got two different kinds of nuts. It's got open open nuts here. These go on the inside, which would be in the oil, and the acorn looking ones go on the top side. Um, I just dropped that one in there. Thank goodness I had the uh, gasket to catch it. So let me grab a magnet and get it out. Try to make the dirty washers go on the inside, and the, or the dirty ones go on the outside, I'm sorry, and the clean ones go on the inside, cleaner ones. All right, run these down with your fingers. And then uh, the torque spec on these things is uh, 29 foot-pounds. I usually like to try to step it up. I might go 15 and 20, 15, 20, and then 30 or something like that, and crisscross them so you make sure you uh, get, get them tightened down even all the way across. Um, there's that one nut. All right, so let me get those torqued down and I'll cut the camera back on. All right, guys, got the uh, head torqued down now. Uh, next thing to do uh, would be to put your gasket back on. This has got two dowels in it. Make sure they're in there and uh, slide your gasket back over the top. Uh, make sure it goes on there the right way. And then put your push rods in. They just stick down in here on top of those. Um, cam followers and they actually have a little notch in the uh, in the gasket there to help hold them and then your rocker arm holder I guess that's what you call that goes on uh, tap it on like that and bolt this thing down and then we will be able to uh, adjust the valves on it I know we don't have the motor halfway put together as far as the front and rear cover but you can still adjust the valves like it is and uh, they're not really going to um, not really gonna change so um, also one other thing I didn't note when you put this head on there's two other 10 millimeter bolts uh, that go over here on the on the front side make sure you get those put in there as well and put all these bolts in tighten them down and I'll cut the camera back on right before I um, get ready to adjust the valves all right guys, I got this thing rotated around uh, back to the T mark here. And uh, at that point, that should be top dead center. Um, the way to check it, it actually turned a little bit while I was uh, tightening these nuts up on the clutches. Uh, you rotate this thing around, it rotates clockwise. You can actually just spin the clutch while you got it off here. And you want the uh, intake valve here to go down and then come back up and then start looking for the T mark. And at that point, you're at top dead center on the compression stroke. And at that point, you should also have play in both your valves. Um, you can hear that one rattling a little bit and that one too. So uh, now we're gonna check the, um, the clearance on those and, and adjust them. I'm not real sure what it's supposed to be, but I can uh, consult my handy dandy manuals of manuals here. And it says the valve clearance is supposed to be um, let me zoom this out a little bit. 0.15 millimeters or 0 0.006 inches. Uh, both of them are the same. So that's that's kind of a common size or common um, adjustment for most of these uh, Hondas. Most of them use that same one. So, all right, let me get the uh, filler gauge and uh, I'll cut the camera back on just to show you guys how to do that. All right, guys, so what you want to do, got the filler gauge here for 0 0.006. Slide it under this, um, or above the valve and below the little adjuster. And it doesn't have any resistance whatsoever. It's got a pretty good gap in it. So you take a 10 millimeter wrench and break that uh, lock nut loose. I usually like to leave the wrench on there because you'll have to tighten it back up later. 
um, and take a screwdriver and a flat screwdriver and spin that adjuster in the center until you get resistance on that um, on that uh, filler gauge. And I like to tighten it down, not to where you got to like uh, about break the feeler gauge to get it out, but I like to have some a decent amount of resistance on it because naturally, as you know, most of these things they they loosen up over time, and actually a lot of times they will loosen up um, a decent amount right when you first crank them up, especially with, since one's been taken apart like this. So uh, I don't want to have to take it right back apart and um, and adjust the valves, or you really don't have to take it apart. You just got to uh, pop the valve covers off. Alright, so that one's got a decent amount of resistance. Then you do the same thing with the other one. You don't have to rotate the motor around or anything. And it's got about the same amount of, uh, of play in it as the, as the exhaust valve did. And so just tighten it down. And that'll be it. Um, I'll have to tighten the adjuster back. but. Guys, uh, that's pretty much it on this one. I'm probably gonna, um, I know everybody wants to see these things when they first crank up. I might uh, wait to upload this and go ahead and get a first start video, but uh, I got, gotta wait on those gaskets first. It's probably gonna be the weekend before I get them on. Uh, I just noticed one other thing we still have to put on is the starter, which is not too big a deal, but um, I'll cut the camera back on, I guess, when I get all this, get the gaskets and get it finally buttoned up, and then uh, try to do a first start video too. All right, guys, back on this uh, Foreman 500. Uh, finally got some gaskets in the mail. Uh, I don't know if you remember from last time, but I um, had ordered the wrong gasket. So I'm getting ready to put this front cover back on. I got all the gasket material cleaned up. Uh, last few things we need to put on here. One is this washer. Um, goes over the end of the crankshaft here. The next thing is uh, the remaining stuff for the shifter over here. Uh, next thing we need to put on is this little arm here. It slides right over the shift shaft. Uh, it's kind of got a notch that it has to go into, so you may have to fish it around a little bit. Push it down until it snaps in between that um, that uh, spring that's in there. Then put this little holder here with the uh, bearing on it into the change clutch. It just slides right in there. Then your this little part here goes in also into the middle of the change clutch with the, the part that's got the little nipple on it. It goes into that bearing that you just put in. Then the thing with the three balls and the um, and the spring on it, it goes on last on the change clutch. The spring goes toward the motor. It'll actually kind of hang on there. We got one remaining washer. This washer goes on this shift shaft. All right, so that's that. I've got these two dials in. You also want to make sure your uh, uh, two O-rings are still on your oil pump here. Everything else looks good. I've got our uh, our gasket here. New one from Honda. So uh, I'm not going to put any uh, any RTV or sealant on these things. This guy don't ride this thing in the water much, so it don't really need to. Any, any additional sealant, these things uh, don't come with any additional sealant from the factory, so uh, it should work fine. So I uh, got both dials in here just to help um, hold that gasket up, just like that. And then you take this new front cover here, or not the new one, this is actually the old front cover, but uh, it's clean. So um, slide it over here now. Main thing is just to get your shift shaft lined up in this to come out this hole here. Like that. Tap it with your hand. That's all the way down. Alright, we've got a number of bolts to go around this thing. Let me go ahead and stick them in. I'll cut the camera back on in just a second. All right, guys. The uh, last thing we're gonna put on this front cover, on the front end here, is this uh, electric shift stuff. If yours is a manual shift, just uh, ignore all this stuff because you won't have any of this. So uh, put everything in a bag here to try to keep up with it. The first thing we need to stick in there is going to be. 
the little funny looking arm thing here it just sits on there it's uh, got a keyway that it needs to go into but uh, the thing you want to look for is there's two little um, cast out pieces here on the on that shaft you want to make sure that the, that the little arm sticks in the center of those two cast pieces um, actually this this gear here has to go in there first it goes in behind that arm just like that and then the last gear is this little small one it goes with the fat teeth first it's the thin, uh, finer teeth go on the outside and then you stick this funny looking gasket seal thing over here and it does have a dowel that goes in this bottom hole here helps line everything up and if it's still in neutral as it should be when you slide this over it should slide right on there and um, everything should line up with the uh, with the angle sensor which is right here because we didn't take that out but when we took the thing apart it was in neutral so uh, now just stick the bolts back in and uh, the electric shift stuff is done all right let me uh get these tightened up and i'll flip it around and, and go ahead and do the stator and all that on the back side all right guys get the last of this stuff put on the back side here and get this stator put back on um next thing you need to put on will be this gear here goes on the shaft it's sticking out and also a washer goes on there and then this little gear goes in with the fat teeth forward with the little shaft on it that's what your starter ties into alright now I've got the uh, new stator gasket and I'm going to put a little bit of RTV on a couple of these locations uh, one right here where this it meets this rubber grommet as well as on the actual stator cover there's another rubber, rubber grommet right there. I'm gonna put some um, put some silicone on or RTV on that as well. And also one other thing you want to make sure you do before you stick this stator in is run that um, the crank bolt with this adapter thing on here for the recoil. Run it on there pretty tight, and then back it back off just to make sure that um, flywheel doesn't slip off on you. And uh, because it it will sometimes because this thing's magnetized. So let me get a little RTV on there, and I'm going to stick this thing back together, and uh, that's going to pretty much be it on this one. I will do a, a video, hopefully I'll have this thing on this weekend, I'll do a video um, of first startup, just because everybody wants to see those. So let me uh, let me get this stator on here, and that's all pretty much for the, for the um, motor reassembly. So, alright, I'll uh, catch you back when I get this thing back on the bike. Alright guys, this is the first start up on this 500 motor, it's the one we did the first gear in. And everybody wants to see these, so here we go. There we go, might need to idle it up a little bit, but uh, it's running. Alright, y'all check out my other videos, like, subscribe, and have a good day.